Hey guys, Josh from CaliforniaThroughMyLens.com. Today we're hiking to three waterfalls in Yosemite National Park on the Panorama Trail. The Panorama Trail is one of the premier hiking trails in Yosemite National Park, offering you some of the best views of the valley and some of the valley's famous waterfalls. This nine mile trail is usually hiked one way with a shuttle drop off at Glacier Point and then hiking all the way back down to the valley. I finally got the chance to do this in July of 2020 and here is all the information. To start the trail you either have to take the shuttle to Glacier Point or get dropped off. The shuttle wasn't running in 2020 because of the pandemic so I got dropped off by my mom and started the trail back to the valley. All right, I'm saying goodbye to my shuttle driver. I will see you in uh, four hours. All right. Heading out on the Panorama Trail. Okay, sounds good. Don't break any leg. <laughs> Had to snap a few photos at Glacier Point, and now we're heading out on the trail. It's eight miles to the valley. We get to see three waterfalls today before we get to the valley. Glacier Point is pretty busy today. It almost feels like a typical summer compared to a month ago when me and my dad were here. The trail begins by leaving Glacier Point and heading down towards the first waterfall. So for all of you who watch my content, this may be your third time seeing this part of the trail, but after the two miles to Illilouette, then it'll all be new all the way down to the valley. And for those of you who haven't seen it, Check out this view, waterfalls and Half Dome. The trail down goes in and out of tree cover with great views of Half Dome out in the distance. There's Nevada Falls, that's the second waterfall we're gonna get to today. If you can use the shuttle system or have two cars, this is a good late season um, hike because you can see three waterfalls and right now Yosemite Falls is actually dry. So when you go into the park, you can't even see that one. First view of the entire mist trail. I was wondering if Vernal and Nevada were gonna be flowing, but they're both flowing pretty good. A lot drier than last time I was here, but still not bad. First view of Illilouette down there as well. It's definitely flowing, but not like it was. The trail continues its downhill climb, giving you great views out towards the valley and towards both of the waterfalls you're going to see. If I had to guess, I think that may be Panoramic Point, which is supposed to be one of the best views of the valley. But I guess we'll see when we get there. Continuing to head downhill, but we're almost to the creek and waterfall. Made it to the junction, Illilouette Fall is right in front of us, and then seven miles to the valley. Don't underestimate this. If you come and just hike to Illilouette Falls, it's a good amount of uphill to get back to Glacier Point. After completing this final switchback, the overlook is right over there. At right around the two mile mark, you'll make it to the overlook for the first waterfall. We made it to the overlook for Illilouette Falls, waterfall number one on this trail. I got a chance to check out this waterfall about a month and a half earlier, so you can see what it looked like in the middle of June and then the end of July. Also, this is what the overlook looks like, so I would definitely not get down there be slippery and it'd be way too easy to fall. Looks like we got a good climb ahead of us. <laughs> There's no real view of the falls past that point. You can see we're already kind of going away from the falls and heading this direction. All right, so everything past this point will be new for those of you who watched my first two videos. From here, the trail heads down to Illilouette Creek, which has a picturesque bridge that you can relax at. Do not swim, you could fall over the waterfall. Not much water in the creek at the moment, but you can see there's a nice pool down there, but I think the waterfall is literally right on the other side of that. This is a great spot to take a break and have a snack before continuing to the uphill section of the hike. 
heading across the bridge at Illilouette Creek. Not a ton of water here right now, but a little bit of flow. wet before this is an easy way to cool yourself off before the uphill so from here we have 800 feet of uphill on switchbacks but once that's done that's the end of all of the uphill on this trail see where those people are at right there that is the overlook for Illouette you can see it's a uh, Good fall, that's why I was saying not to get close to the edge. You can't even see the waterfall from this direction, it'd be down there somewhere. Maybe we'll see it as we keep going. At this point, the trail trades shade and downhill for sun and uphill. Note that if you do this <laughs> in the middle of the day like me, it's hot and exposed. You can actually start to see the trail that we came down to get to a little away from Glacier Point. This is where we're at now. Nothing much to report here. It's basically just an uphill slog without any real views at the moment. As you make your way up, keep your eyes peeled for a short spur trail at about three quarters of a mile from the bridge. This trail will take you out to the viewpoint known as Panorama Point. I made it to Panorama Point, which is one of the best views of the valley that doesn't have a waterfall. Check it out. I had never seen this view before I went and I don't see it showing up in photos very often, so it's definitely worth checking out if you're on the trail. It's a really unique view of Yosemite that not many people get. My end point for this hike is right down there at the start of the mist trail. Make sure you guys note that panorama point back there. I read it was two thirds of a mile from the river. So I was kind of just watching for it. It's unmarked and it has overgrown manzanita, but the views are incredible. I legit have adrenaline heading into this last uphill section after seeing how beautiful that spot was. You can start seeing all the way up to Glacier Point up there. We're still heading uphill. It's hot. 200 feet left to go. You can see Glacier Point and what's left of dry Yosemite Falls right there. Half Dome is watching me and looks very unimpressed. At this point, there was only about 200 feet of elevation left and the views gave way to Yosemite Valley out to your left. Almost done with switchbacks, but at least we have some shade. Made it to the top of the uphill. Now it's downhill all the way back to the valley. We got our first view of Nevada Falls right through those trees. After you complete the elevation, you'll be greeted with a nice flat section for about three quarters of a mile and good views of Half Dome out in the distance. We're a mile from Nevada Falls and halfway to the valley. After the flat section, the trail starts heading down on a series of downhill switchbacks that take you towards Nevada Fall. It's definitely a beautiful area and it was a welcomed addition to the trail for me as you just got to focus on the views and the nice forest that you were walking through. We reached the junction with the John Muir Trail. Nevada Fall is 0.2 miles that way. If you want to, when you're coming back, you can take the John Muir Trail back to the valley floor. It's much easier on your knees, but we're gonna take the mist trail today because it's better views. From the junction with the John Muir Trail, it's a short walk down to the top of the waterfall. There's Glacier Point where we started. Now we're all the way at the top of Nevada Falls. We 
made it to the top of waterfall number two, Nevada Falls. I was pretty tired by the time I got here as I had done a lot of hiking the last few days, so I just sat under the bridge, took a break, and watched the water flow in front of me. Pretty good break spot, out in the sun, nice view, back rest. I picked these up at Gus's on 395 on my drive up. It's one of my favorite trail snacks. Had lunch, got a snack, wet my head with the buff, now it's time to head on. Don't forget to walk to the other side and the stairs that take you down to the viewing platform that lets you look right down on the waterfall. Heading out on the John Muir Trail to meet up with the top of the mist trail, I think, and then start the hike back to the valley. This is the last real bathroom on the Half Dome Trail, but we're going that way back to the valley. Never mind, I was going to take the mist trail, but it's closed. So we got to take the John Muir Trail. So it's a bummer to have to take the John Muir Trail because it's not as scenic, but it is easier on the knees. So a lot of people probably would do this if they were doing the Panorama Trail. Plus I have lots of clips of the mist trail I'll play when we get to the right spots. Back to the original junction, but we're going this way, 3.3 miles. The John Muir Trail is one of two options to take you back to the Yosemite Valley. This one's about a mile longer and it's a lot more gradual so it's not as steep as the stairs that take you down the mist trail. That being said, it always feels really long to me and it's not my favorite trail in the Yosemite. This is the best section of this trail. It has this awesome cutout of the rock. When you get about halfway, you get amazing views towards Nevada Falls. This first view of Nevada Fall from the trail is one of my favorite views in Yosemite Valley, so this part of the trail is definitely worth it. It's really amazing to be able to see the waterfall with Liberty Cap sticking out behind it. The thing that's nice about taking the JMT down is that it's relatively gradual, so it's longer than the other trail, but the other trail is basically like walking on big steps, and this is just like a normal gradual trail down. Most people elect to take the John Muir Trail when they're coming back down from Half Dome because it's a lot harder to take the other one after a big hike like that. The John Muir Trail is well maintained and even has some cement sections as you go down on the switchbacks with views back towards Nevada Fall and Liberty Cap. It's also pretty shaded which makes it nice when you're walking in the heat of the day like I was. Do make sure to check the one-way status of the Mist Trail if you go anytime in 2020. It's nice and shaded, can't complain. Nothing really to report or update though. The trail continues to descend, heading away from Nevada Fall as you make it back to the junction that connects with Vernal Fall. So this is the part that's closed with COVID going down the mist trail, so we have to continue on the JMT. But here's a bunch of shots of what the mist trail looks like. So if you do this when it's not COVID, you can go down that way. The mist trail is one of the most famous trails in Yosemite National Park, and it heads up to the top of Vernal Fall on a series of big stone steps. What makes it so impressive is that the water falls right in front of you and sometimes it's flowing so hard that the mist covers the trail. Now back to the Panorama Trail hike. From the junction, it was about 2.5 miles back to the valley. From here, the trail is mostly covered with trees, but every once in a while, you'll get glimpses of the canyon and even Glacier Point out in the distance. Lots of switchbacks on this section of the trail, but at least they're downhill switchbacks. More and more switchbacks. Feels like this part of the trail never ends. It really does feel like this trail goes on forever, but after about a mile and a half, you'll reach the junction with the lower mist trail. We made it back to the junction of the John Muir Trail and the mist trail, one mile to the valley. 
from here, the trail is really beautiful again as it follows the creek and you'll start to see crowds of people starting their hike on the mist trail. Pretty soon after connecting with the junction, you'll reach an area with a bathroom and a water refill station. Plus, it also has a wooden footbridge that many people use as a turnaround point, not knowing how steep the mist trail is when they start hiking it. The bridge is where I was finally able to get my view of the third waterfall for the day, Fernal Fall. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get any closer because of the one-way COVID restrictions, but it was still a pretty incredible sight to see. Leaving the bridge a little bit less than a mile back to the valley. We were all the way up there and along that trail. This part of the mist trail is a steep downhill on a cement trail. Plus, there'll be tons of people hiking up and down with you as it is one of the most popular trails in the park. This last portion of the hike is normally busy, but not today because of COVID, plus it's shaded, so it's nice, and we are almost done with an epic hiking of Yosemite. There it is, Glacier Point, 8.2. That's what we did today. I found my shuttle driver. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Ready to go. All right. Best way ever to end a hike. And just like that, we made it back from Glacier Point to the Yosemite Valley 8.2 miles. That was incredible. Even without the mist trail, having to go down the John Muir Trail, it was still incredible. If you can do it when the shuttle's here, definitely do it. That's it for this video, and we'll see you on the next one.